This is the third version of the portable soldering iron board and probably the last one, because I'm quite satisfied with the new design. The board is smaller, so it will be more compact. I'm using a way smaller buck converter to get the 5 volts. I removed the buzzer since that wasn't too important and also I used a small crystal so I will have more space. I've changed a bit the firmware so we will get a better temperature read. So in this short video I'll just show you how I've made this third version. I'm planning a kickstarter on this board. You would receive the board and all the components so together with all these videos you will learn electronics, support my work and end up with a portable soldering iron. Your support will help me for a more commercial future version that could end up on the market. But the most important thing is that you could learn with a kit like this one. Because following my videos, together with the board and all the components that you would receive, you could learn how to solder SMD and through hole components, how to prepare the microcontroller, burn the bootloader, program the PAT control, read the temperature from the thermocouple, control power, coding in the Arduino IDE and much more. So tell me in the comment section below what do you think about the kickstarter on this board. With your help I would be able to order all the boards, the microchips, the extra components and create all the kits. Before we start make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also thanks to all my patrons for the support. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Great news about their services. JLC PCB has a widely priced cut for 1 to 6 layers boards and also an offer for PCB together with the stencil. The price is 15 to 20% lower on stencil, 25% on multi-layer PCBs and 5 to 20% on batch PCBs. Production time and shipping is just a couple of days. So order your PCBs now for very low prices. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is version 1 for this project. The board has some circuit issues and it was still quite big. As you can see with the 3D case the entire iron is quite big. I've made the second version and it works great and in the previous video I've explained you how to make it. I've also included some extra features but I really wanted to make a new version. Here I have the last version for this portable soldering iron. As you can see it is much smaller, so the 3D printed case will also be smaller. And not just that, but it doesn't have a huge DC plug like this one. Using this DC plug I had to make the case taller so the board could fit inside of the case. Also now the buttons are on the sides. The OLED screen is in the middle and it uses a USB connector as main input. Let's see its main features. First of all the board will use this T12 soldering iron tip that you could buy for around 3 or 4 dollars. Ok so starting on this side of the board we have this very small buck converter. This will regulate the 5 volts voltage for the microcontroller, the OLED screen and the amplifier. In the middle of the board we have space for a one color OLED screen controlled by an I2C communication and next to the screen we have two push buttons to control the temperature and other settings. Below this OLED screen is the Atmega 328 microcontroller that will control everything. On the other end of the board we have once again the vibration sensor. This is used to enter or exit sleep mode if the iron is not used for a certain amount of time. Ok on the back of the board we have the mini B USB type connector and right next to it we have the N channel MOSFET that will control the power applied to the iron tip. In the middle we have the positive and negative clips for the iron tip and an amplifier used to read the voltage drop over the thermocouple and by that obtain the real temperature. There are some other small components such as diodes, resistors and capacitors so see the full schematic below if you want to see all the values for each of these components. Ok on this corner we have the wart pins so we could program the board using an FTDA programmer like this one. And that's pretty much everything about this board. So let's solder the components, create the 3D design for the case and see the final product. Ok step 1 is to solder the basic configuration of the microcontroller. I get a new board and we will solder the Atmega chip, the R11 resistor which is a pull up for the reset pin and the C2 capacitor. This capacitor is used for the DTR pin when uploading codes so we need that. 
I also solder the 60 MHz crystal and the 1 mega ohms resistor right next to it. Now the basic configuration is ready. Using my multimeter I check for shorts and for good connections. And if we are good to go, I connect the FTD module to the wart pins. I now upload a simple code that uses the serial communication to talk to the chip. And if the code works, that means that the chip is ready. Make sure you have a chip with a bootloader burned to it. See my previous videos in order to know how to burn the bootloader to an Atmega 328 chip. Ok, now that the most important element is soldered, we can keep soldering components. On the back side I solder the USB connector. Then the MOSFET, the small BJT transistor at the MOSFET gate, the rest of the resistors and capacitors, the diodes and the small operational amplifier. On the top side of the board I solder the vibration sensor, the input diode and the side buttons. You see, these buttons also have some wings, but the pad that I've used for the PCP doesn't have one. But don't worry, in the final PCB you can download from below, this problem is already solved. But for now, I will put some hot glue behind of the buttons so they won't break off of the board. Now pay attention. Before we solder the buck converter, first make sure the output is exactly 5 volts. So connect your power supply to the converter input and with a multimeter, rotate the potentiometer till you get 5 volts. Then I glue the potentiometer in place so it won't move and burn my board. Now I can solder the converter to my board. Make sure which is the input and the output just as marked on the PCB. I finally solder the iron tip clips. I make sure once again that there are no shorts and that the voltage is exactly 5 volts on the VCC pins and now I can solder the OLED screen. And our board is ready, but it has no working code. So for that I plug the FTD module once again and upload the version 3 of the code for this portable soldering iron. You have the links for the schematic, the board, codes and more examples below on my webpage electronoops.com. Ok guys, so now I connect my power supply to the iron connector with a voltage from 19 to 20 volts to simulate a 5S battery. So the board turns on. We don't have the buzzer anymore so there are no more beeps. Ok so I press one of the buttons and the iron starts heating and the preset temperature is 280 degrees. Press the top button to increase the temperature. I set it to 450 degrees and in a few seconds the iron reaches that temperature. Right now I could easily solder something with this iron. You must use a 5S battery or a 20 volts input, otherwise the heating time will be longer and also it won't reach the maximum temperature. Now if I connect the oscilloscope to the MOSFET gate, we can see how the PAD reacts and makes the width of the pole smaller when the set temperature is reached. Also the width of the poles gets bigger when I touch the wet sponge in order to keep the same temperature automatically. Ok so by pressing the other button we can lower the temperature. If I press both buttons at the same time for a few seconds, it will enter into sleep mode and turn off the power applied to the iron tip. Then by pressing the top button it will exit sleep mode and heat up once again. Also if you don't move the board for 5 minutes it will get into sleep mode automatically. Now if I poke or move the iron, it will start once again because the vibration sensor will detect the movement. We could change the sleep time if we want. For that, press both buttons and enter sleep mode. Now press the left button and enter sleep mode settings. Press the top button and increase the time up to 10 minutes or set it to off. I will leave it to 5 minutes as before. Ok guys, so now I've designed this case for the board. I've made a lot of tests before I end up with this design. It has space for the board. We could insert or remove the soldering iron tip on this hole. It has space for the push buttons and the hole on the back for the USB connector. I place the board inside of the bottom case. Then I take these very small 3D printed buttons and place those here on these holes. They should be able to move with no friction and press the push buttons on the board. Now I place the cover on top and tie two screws at the ends and the case is ready. Insert the iron tip into the case and let's power it up once again. 
So there you have it. I've made my own portable soldering iron design. All you need is the unit, the cable and the 5S battery and you could use it anywhere that you want. It weighs around 40 grams including the iron tip, so it is quite light. The case is 10 cm long and 2.2 cm width. Ok, so it can reach 400 degrees with no problems. It is quite fast and it has a nice OLED screen and to control the temperature it uses a PID control. I've noticed that the MOSFET was getting a little bit hot, so maybe a heat dissipator would be a good idea. At 20 volts, it draws a current of 1.8 amperes, so a total power of 36 watts. I've used it for over 15 minutes and the base of the tip wasn't hot enough to melt the plastic case, since I was preoccupied that might happen, but it didn't, so I'm quite happy with this final design of the 3D case. It is small, the buttons work with no problems, and the board fits perfectly inside. The tips are also very cheap and very easy to change in case one gets old, damaged or you want a different shape. Please check the code and read it line by line in order to understand how it works. You will also need to download the OLED screen and PID libraries. As for the temperature read, I've made this grab with a voltage read from the amplifier and the real temperature given by an external thermocouple and with that data I've made this function of the temperature and place it here in the code. Since the line is not perfectly linear, I've divided into two ranges, up to 300 degrees and over 300 degrees. Read the code for more and also check my webpage electronus.com. I'm sharing the schematic, the part list, the 3D files for the case, the code and the Gerbers for the board below of this video. If I get a good response from you, I might make the next improved board a kickstarter, so you would be able to learn at the same time you solder and make your own board. So that's it for the new portable soldering iron design. I hope that you liked this video and that you have learned something new. If so, don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep this kind of projects going. So thank you very much for your support. Thanks again and see you later guys.